Good day guys, Mike here. We're checking out the camp cookware today and the, and the emergency stoves. Let me just turn this off. Just thought I'd do a little uh, quick video about uh, you know testing your emergency equipment like your stoves and kind of getting used to what you need to use all your camp cookware and even I had to run back inside the house a couple of times to get a couple of things and this isn't even the full setup so we're just a couple of days you know after Hurricane Helene and I know people down in especially like North Carolina they're hurting bad guys I mean, they have no power, no internet, uh, half their roads are washed away. I mean, whether it be a hurricane or, a, you know, an earthquake, I'm on the west coast, so that's a kind of a worry. Um, our biggest problem here is uh, possible evacuation, you know, in a rush because of a you know major forest fire and stuff so I thought well I'm gonna get out the the stove which I've already done a video on before and test it out and burn off the old fuel believe it or not the fuel that I'm testing with today which still works fine is 25 or 26 years old it's been in those fuel bottles ever since I bought it and that was in the late 90s so I've got a few different pieces here to uh, kind of show you talk about and uh, you know let's just get right into it I guess this is a old mid early 1950s Coleman model 4k dual burner camp stove it's uh, multi-fuel. It'll run on pretty well anything you want to put in it. The dirtier the fuel, the more often you need to do some minor disassembly and some cleaning, which is really, really so easy, guys. I mean, I'm not going to show you any of that stuff here. There's lots of videos on, you know, timing how long it takes to boil water and and how to clean and service these uh, stoves, but. You know, you can get these at flea markets or uh, garage sales for dirt cheap. And they're worth they're worth every penny you, you spend on them. Uh, I've, I've heard of people getting them for as cheap as 10 bucks. So, right here I've got a large pot of water. Took only the, the time it took to have a cigarette basically to boil this. This is enough to cook a meal for a whole family. And then I've got a little pot here that I was testing with earlier today, which is just a coffee pot that I painted black with high temp paint. And, uh, you know, enough to make yourself a hot chocolate or a coffee, something like that. Both burners, you know, work work as as intended uh, easy to light in fact I was using I was just using my little pocket uh, ferro rod to light you know all both burners on that one and the uh, dragonfly let me just get this pot moved and this is the little uh, tin foil type uh, windscreen. There's also a round um, heat reflector uh, that you can just fold up and it's made out of the same material. I just couldn't find it today. It's somewhere in with my supplies. So the windscreen is always a good idea to have you know around your stove. And this one I hope you can see it properly. This is the uh, MSR Dragonfly multi-fuel stove. I'm burning white gas if I didn't mention that before, which is very, very expensive, guys. I mean you want you're gonna probably want to buy good clean 
ethanol free auto gas you know which is going to be considerably cheaper um, it's got a little bottle that you can run it on the pump and the stove it's a pretty basic setup uh, I bought some extra bottles when I bought the stove you know 25 years or so ago and uh, I keep a spare cap and this is the one normally for the bottle but I have a spare cap if you need to and then what I've done also is I've taken uh, photocopies of all the parts and the operating instructions and I've taped them to the outside of you know all the bottles I don't know if you can see that or not all the part numbers for uh, all that stuff and then uh, I also keep a little kit here this is all for the MSR stove and it's all the spare o-rings and the tool if you want to use it and the different jets that you need to burn uh, diesel or kerosene or gas or whatever some lubrication fluid for the pump and more spare parts for the pump. I've never needed to change absolutely any part on this stove, although I don't really use it a whole lot. So anyway, we've got that kit. And the Coleman stove. Parts are available online for absolutely everything that you might ever need for one of those stoves. And uh, then finally, just back here, I've also got this one which I made. Now I've made three of these and this one I haven't actually burned in yet. But I uh, kind of want to make a shout out to uh, Mark Young which is a bushcrafter who's got a YouTube channel from Nova Scotia here in Canada on the opposite coast. So um, this was his idea as far as using these conduit clamps, which uh, you can just loosen off and then turn them in for storage. And this is actually a uh, utensil uh, drainer for like restaurants to drain the water off their spoons and knives and forks and stuff and it came from Ikea and they're dirt cheap they're I don't know five or ten bucks or something like that and then I just went to Home Depot and bought a number of uh, spikes that I can use to support pots this is uh, perfect for you know smaller pots you know like this one or uh, it works particularly well with a canteen cup and this is just strictly a wood burner uh, like a twig stove and then uh, let me pull these out I made these little uh, wind screens out of an old piece of wood stove pipe that I had I just cut them to different different uh, heights so I can do different things with the stove and they all store wrapped around the stove and you can just slide that on and slide it down and it works as a bit of a windscreen and if you want to lower it completely you know you just pull these extra spikes out lower it right down and if you want to raise it up or if you want to use a, a thicker one a wider one to cover more of it it's it works for me so this is a this is a winning you know simple I mean you just basically have to go into the woods and get a whole bunch of sticks to to fire this thing up and I've I've had this thing boil up a canteen cup full of water in about three minutes with good dry wood so there's the wood stove the MSR Dragonfly, the Coleman stove, and then I've got all these, uh, same thing, got them at a thrift store, 
These are in camping, you know, pots with uh, bat wing type handles. And uh, this pot will fit, you know, right inside this one. And then this will fit, you know, inside this pot. And the whole thing will actually fit inside this pot, which the only reason I'm not using it today is I misplaced the screw that holds the uh, handle on it. So it's probably on my workbench, I guess. And then all that stuff kind of nests. There's also a, you know, a little example of a camp coffee mug. What I like to do is heat the water up in a pot or keep your mug, you know, hot. And then everybody in camp, you know, really should have a, an insulated coffee mug with a lockable lid. And because it's too hot to drink directly out of one of these things if you've had it over a fire. So I, I carry this everywhere I go. And just a plain old, you know, dollar store, you know, funnel. Three for dollar twenty-five or something like that to put the fuel in them. Uh, lots of spikes because I have three of the twig stoves. I've got a few other mods that I'm working on, including an adjustable damper for different heat control. And uh, today, just because we want to do something, we are going to have good old-fashioned boiled hot dogs. I hope you guys uh, get out there and test your stoves and your cookware and get a little, you know, one gallon, you know, jerry can of fuel uh, and set it aside and whether you use it for an emergency or for for fun, for camping or whatever. Give it a try. Have a great day, everybody. Mike out.